Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Priya Sipaha. Today we are going to discuss some of the significant provisions for women in the Indian legal system. This will be part one only. I'm going to make a series of the video because we are having n number of provisions for women in our Indian legal system. So let's start with the first one. In India, our legal system has provided many laws and many rights, especially to protect and prevent women, and they keep on amending time to time. Here it is evident and pertinent to mention Nirbhaya case. Why I'm doing so? Because after the brutal gang rape of Nirbhaya in 2013, there are many amendments has been made in our legal system, especially in Indian Penal Court. So there are some provisions for the women in criminal law also, which has been made specifically for her, which every woman should know. So here they are. Now, first one is stalking. This is a very common word, which is often used among the youngsters. But whether they are aware that after 2013 amendment, stalking under section 354D of IPC has been made a specific offense. Now what is stalking? Basically it is divided into two parts. The first one is offline stalking and the second one is online stalking. In offline stalking the offense has been committed by the person personally and in online stalking that has been committed by the person through online or through social media or email or any other thing. So stalking means if anyone follows a woman tries to contact her to foster personal interaction repeatedly despite a clear indication of disinterest that is called as offline stalking. And similarly, if any person monitor the use by a woman of the internet, email or any other form of electronic communication, despite her clear indication of disinterest, then it comes under cyber stalking or online stalking. For that, he may be punished with imprisonment of up to three years for first time and five years for subsequent conviction. However, the offense is subject to certain exceptions like when a person can show that the act done were in pursuance of some law amounted to reasonable conduct or in order to prevent of some crime. The next one is voyeurism. It has been described under section 354C of IPC. Basically voyeurism means if any man watches or captures the image of a woman when she is engaging in a private act in circumstances where she would usually have the expectation of not being observed. That means in her private movement. It may be in her bedroom, it may be in her toilet, it may be in the trial room of a mall or a shop, or it may be in a hotel room. Anywhere, when a person is in her private woman moment, then she is not supposed to be watched by anyone else. If a person or if a man is taking her picture or making a video of her that come under the offense which has been stated under section 354c of IPC which is called a voyeurism and the punishment on first conviction is one year but which may extend to three years and fine and when it is second time or subsequent conviction the punishment may be three years and which may extend to seven years and fine the third one is word, gesture or act intend to insult the modesty of women. Now, I think some of the men thinks that it is their right to do so, but they are not aware that this particular thing is an offense under section 509 of IPC that whoever, whoever intending to insult the modesty of any women by utter any word make any sound or gesture or exhibit any object intending that such word or sound shall be heard or that such gesture or object shall be seen by such women 
or intrude upon the privacy of such woman he shall be punished with simple imprisonment of a term which may extend to one year or with fine or with both next is assault on woman with intent to outrage her modesty now this is one step ahead according to section 354 of ipc whoever assault or uses criminal force to any woman intending to outrage or knowing it to be likely that he will thereby outrage her modesty for instance hugging a woman without her consent kissing her touching her private parts or any act which is likely to put her to shame by outrage her modesty he shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to 2 years or with fine or both the next is acid attack acid attack is considered as one of the most brutal offense which is committed on any woman this is also included after 2013 amendment of ipc acid attack is defined under section 326 of ipc which is divided into two parts section 326 a of ipc defines the meaning of acid and acid attack and the punishment pertaining to acid attack where is section 326 b defined attempt to acid attack and the punishment related to it so according to section 326 a of ipc acid includes any substance which has acidic or corrosive character or burning nature that is capable of causing bodily injury leading to scars or disfigurement or temporary or permanent disability the long term consequences of these attack may include blindness as well as permanent scarring of face and body along with far reaching social psychological and economic difficulties if any person throws an acid on anyone he will be punished for minimum punishment of 10 years and it can extend to life imprisonment with fine under section 326a of ipc whereas section 326b is related to attempt to acid attack where punishment is not less than 5 years but which may extend to 7 years and shall also be liable to fine so these are some of the legal provisions which is specially made to prevent and protect women in india there are many more which i am going to explain in my later video you may also visit my website that is priyasapaha.com and also follow me on fb page that is law colleq instagram law colleq and twitter dr priya sapaha where i keep on posting some of the legal provisions Thank you for watching. I hope you like the video and if you like it do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe my channel. Thank you.